We're learning more this week about why the coronavirus is still hammering two of Canada's biggest cities, Toronto and Montreal. A big part of what's happening is that the virus is no longer driven as much by outbreaks in long-term care homes. It's now spreading rapidly in the community among essential workers, people like taxi drivers, retail employees, and factory workers. And there are signs of a radical shift in strategy. Ontario now is promising to go test people in their communities and in their workplaces whether or not they have symptoms. Here's what we've learned about who is most affected. Toronto released postal code data this week revealing where its COVID-19 hotspots are, mostly in the city's northwest and northeast, largely low-income areas with high numbers of social housing and people of colour. But Toronto's richest neighbourhoods, like the ones with fancy condos on the waterfront, well, they have much fewer cases. A similar story is playing out in Montreal North, one of the poorest neighbourhoods in all of Canada. It also became a COVID-19 hotspot earlier this month. Montreal North is home to a large portion of recent immigrants, up to 40% of which are essential workers, many of those people in healthcare. And the city has been scrambling to help, deploying mobile testing facilities to try and get the outbreak under control. Residents there are still in crisis mode. But here's the thing, all of this data shows where people with COVID live, not where they got it or where they go every day. There's not a single neighbourhood in Toronto or Montreal that is not affected. We know that this isn't over for anyone until we all get it under control. Joining me now is Nahid Dasani. He's a physician who works with vulnerable populations in Toronto. So, Nahid, just last week, the Ontario Premier, Doug Ford, was talking about how revealing this data could be kind of stigmatizing for people that live in these neighbourhoods. Uh, and now they're using the data to inform their new strategy. So, I mean, is it? Do you think it is stigmatizing? No, absolutely not. It goes without saying that just because certain communities uh, have a higher proportion of COVID-19, it doesn't mean they got it there. Um, it just means that they might reside there. These scientific questions are important because they dig at the roots of injustice in our communities and really uh, peel away the layers of the onion as to why certain communities are being impacted by others. There is no doubt that income, housing status, and racial backgrounds have a huge impact in who's getting COVID-19. And so the collection of of this data and asking these questions are essential. So why are people in these communities more vulnerable to COVID? Well, I think there's there's multiple factors at play. One of the predominant factors that comes to light is, is income. And we know that income is a huge determinant of health outcomes. We also know that um, uh, people in this, these communities live in more dense uh, environments, and so there's less ability to physically space. Many people in these communities also work um, in service jobs, which are often lower income and put them at risk, including working in plants and, and factories and grocery stores. So there are multiple risks at play, um, which may not be seen right at the forefront, but you have to dig a little deeper to see them. You have said that you were particularly struck by the case of Leonard Rodriguez. He was a, a personal service worker who died of COVID. What, what was it about him? Uh, Leonard Rodriguez, uh, rest in peace, uh, was a, a personal support worker who, um, due to an inadequate supply of PPE and other factors, fell sick um, and died of COVID-19. As it turns out, when the story came out, not only was that a tragic factor, but when he was sick, um, he was scared and um, didn't trust the healthcare system because he was black. And for some people, stories like that work and other people need to look to data. Nearly 70% of COVID-19 cases in Ontario have happened in our most ethnically and racialized uh, uh, communities. And so uh, we know that race impacts healthcare outcomes. I think we're just starting to realize how color coded our healthcare system really is. What do you say to people who will say, well, I'm not in one of those communities or I'm not in Toronto or Montreal. Why should I care? It's a really good question. I, I think there's the obvious point that if we don't worry about everyone in our communities, uh, there's the potential that people can get sick, uh, like people experiencing homelessness, for example, and that infection can pass on to other people. But I hope that's not the only reason we're caring about vulnerable communities. Um, I, I, I know that there that there is sometimes a sense of why should I care? Well, research shows that in, in communities where people uh, are more connected and there's more equity, 
weight. So the disparity gap is smaller, that people are healthier and happier. And I think it boils down to one question. When we look in the mirror, we have to ask ourselves what kind of Canada we see. I see a Canada that cares for all people because health um, and safety is a fundamental human right. And I hope that uh, our listeners and people watching this show agree with that. So there's long been calls for more testing uh, in Montreal North, for example. They have vans that have gone to test people in some of the hard hit communities. Do you see that happening? Is it starting to happen? The, the, the Premier is saying it will. Um, we haven't seen that to the degree that it needs to be out there, but we are very much welcoming and in support of universal asymptomatic testing, uh, contact tracing, but it's not just doing those uh, uh, those items in, in isolation. It's the ability to communicate them as well. And when dealing with diverse communities, we need to think about language. We need to think about culture. We need to think about how people are feeling about these messages. And inconsistent messaging from public health does not help. And we have seen that um, uh, along this journey. And, and I think that sometimes this discourse focuses on a on a on a very um, uh, a particular population, but we need to translate this message so that every Canadian understands their role around masks, around physical distancing, and overall safety. Nahid, it's been great to talk to you. Thank you so much. Thanks for having me on the show, Wendy.